What bill allows veterans to participate in education programs, including vocational schools and on-the-job training? The electric bill. A uh, dollar bill? My neighbor bill. No, it's the post-9-11 GI bill. It's easier than you think. New airstrikes. The United States continues its campaign to take out ISIL. Double duty. We go inside a tower at one busy military installation to see how air traffic controllers stay on top. Happy reunion. A normal school day turns into a big surprise for one military family. Welcome to DOD News Now. I'm Tech Sergeant Nathan Perry. U.S. forces carried out more airstrikes against ISIL targets in Syria and Iraq Monday night and Tuesday using bomber and remotely piloted aircraft. A statement released by U.S. Central Command says two strikes were conducted over Syria and a third in Iraq. Yesterday, in an interview with DOD News, Pentagon spokesman Rear Admiral John Kirby called targeted airstrikes successful. We wanted to be as precise and as lethal as we could be. And again, we, we think we were. More than 160 munitions uh, were dropped on targets uh, overnight. And so far, we have no indications at all that there was any significant collateral damage. And does ISIL have popular support in the targeted areas? ISIL, um, whatever support that they have anywhere they are, is out of fear and intimidation. Uh, it's their, they base their whole uh, structure on a warped ideology, which is just brutal and barbaric at its very root. Uh, and we have seen that even those sympathetic Sunni populations have now begun to turn on ISIL uh, and start to either leave the group or certainly stop supporting the group. Rear Admiral Kirby added that the targeted areas included places where ISIL forces train, finance, and resupply themselves. Soldiers from U.S. Army Europe's 158th Aviation Regiment deployed as Task Force Storm are in Norway for NATO exercise Noble Ledger. With the lift of three Blackhawks, Task Force Storm is helping the rotational NATO response force maintain combat readiness. The reality is, is we don't know what the future looks like. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weirdness going on east of us. Uh, we don't know what could happen at, at any moment. You know, it's very unpredictable. You know, we could be somewhere else very quickly or nothing could happen. You know, the, the whole Cold War happened. A little skirmishes here and there, but for the most part, it wasn't any huge rumbles. Nobody really knows. So that's why we have to be prepared to do anything. Uh, really, you know, drop of a hat, be ready to go. The 158th Aviation Regiment is part of the 12th Combat Aviation Brigade and is based in Ansbach, Germany. For air traffic ground controllers onboard Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, staying above the game is part of the job even if it means some late nights and double duty. Corporal Trevor Phillips explains. In the air traffic ground control tower, training and operating occur simultaneously. On an ever-changing Marine Corps air station at Iwakuni, it's especially important that these controllers keep up to date on the ever-changing protocols and page after page of standard operating procedures. Ground controllers must constantly study so they can not only perform well on the job, but also to keep their qualifications. I train on the movement of aircraft and vehicles around the airfield and I give them instructions so they can move in a safe and timely manner and make sure there's no conflicts, no problems with it, make sure they get there safely and on time for either their departures or arrivals, whatever they have to do. Air traffic control not only demands thorough knowledge of SOPs, but it's also a field that forces Marines to think on their feet. And that's what makes it difficult. It's not like you can fix something with your like strength or anything. You have to mentally think it through. And you can't just stop. You have to continue to keep going. That's what makes it unique, I think. And it's up to the trainers to develop their students into sharp and effective ground controllers. I take great pride in my students. Uh, whenever I get assigned as a primary instructor or a, a team leader for a student, uh, I, I always try to instill a little bit of myself and my controlling in them. And uh, once they're qualified and they do something and they're uh, awarded or praised for something they do, you know, I like to look and smile and be like, I, I taught them that. You know, that's my technique. That's my technique. Reporting from Marine Corps Air Station, Iwakuni, Japan, I'm Corporal Trevor Phillips. Closer to home, an Ohio Air National Guardsman surprised his two young children at preschool. Daddy! Daddy! Big guy! Daddy! Oh, Maria. Daddy! Hi, baby. Daddy! Daddy! Mwah. 
Give me Captain Matthew Gwynn spent the last four months deployed to the Middle East and Africa. He wanted to surprise Maria and her brother Charlie, so he contacted local news crews. This is the first time Captain Gwynn has been away from both of his children. He's home on a month's leave. Be sure to check out the DoD Facebook page for the latest on the situation in Syria. Watch for us also on Twitter. I'm Tech Sergeant Nathan Perry. Keep it right here for the latest in DoD news.